Greetings, everyone. I am beyond pleased to be finally back in my workroom at 24 Washington Avenue with another historical sewing video to share with you. Hopefully, this isn't the first video of mine that you've seen. If it is, I'd be very honored if you would take a look at some of the other videos on my channel. In addition to my interest in historically inspired clothing, I've also surrounded myself with various functional items from times gone by that I use on a day to day basis. To those of you who joined me in 2020 and stuck around despite me becoming increasingly quiet on the video front, you have my heartfelt thanks. I'm always so grateful for your support with likes, subscriptions and comments, because to me there really is nothing quite as rewarding as knowing that something I share is of use or interest to someone else. One thing that has been missing from my Victorian wardrobe has been some sort of posterior skirt support call it a form, a bustle, or a bum pad. To crudely demonstrate the effect that such a pad can have, I've got this bag of fabric scraps which I shall now place under my skirt. Not only does it provide fullness at the back to counterbalance the bust, but it also helps to hold skirts like this up where there's a fan or pleat at the back which causes additional weight and can cause that waistband to sag in the back. I have been largely using Charles Stone's 1897 cutting guide, and while bustles were far less pronounced at this time than those of the mid-1880s, it was still part of the fashionable wardrobe. Some of my much-loved creators have already reproduced bustles from this era. Bernadette Banner's reconstruction of a 1903 patent, Enchanted Rose's melange of various 1890s designs, and Engineering Knit's 1890-91 fashion catalogue reconstruction. But I wanted to try to do something a bit different to the stuffed padded fabric designs that I have seen, especially with the mention that extra heat might be uh, generated in that general area during the summer. I'd rather steer clear of that if possible. I made the most of Google's patent searches and ended up finding these three designs from the 1890s. Two designed by the same gentleman, Henry H. Taylor, one filed in 1897 and the other in 1898, and the third by Harry Keel, filed in October of 1898. The difference with these designs is that they make the use of wire mesh, and I had just the thing sitting in my workroom cupboard a section of wire mesh screen, the very same material that you can use in screen windows. You can buy them by the roll at home improvement stores or online. Just note that there is also a fiberglass mesh version and I have absolutely no idea how well that would work. I have linked all three patents below and would certainly encourage you to read them over, but here's a brief overview. Mr. Taylor's first design effectively is a rectangle of bias cut mesh where the top and bottom edges are contracted and the whole thing is bent over on itself forcing the middle section to effectively balloon and thus hold the skirt out. His second design did away with the doubling over of the mesh Instead, the mesh was only used for the outer layer and a two-part lacing piece attaches to the back or underside to stabilize the fullness of the front piece. The sides are compressed along the bias to throw this fullness into the base. Mr. Keel's design, which ended up being granted its patent status some four months after Mr. Taylor's second, also has a single mesh outer layer, but connects all the way around to a fixed size cloth base layer. All three designs connect to a waistband. The patents reference no measurements, so some guesswork will have to be done. I'm starting with the basis that no one would want to sit on their bustle form, and therefore these should not be any longer than the distance from the waistline to a chair when seated. For me, this means no longer than nine and a half inches. Widthwise is a bit more of a wild card. 
I have no idea how wide something like this should be. I'm just measuring across my back like this to vaguely correspond with images I've seen, and we'll see where it goes. But that's no more than 10 inches wide. Now, while my waist to seat measurement is nine and a half inches, I don't think that the bustle necessarily needs to be that long. The longer I make it, the lower the fullness will be. No saggy bottoms here, please. And then there's the waistband to be taken into consideration too. I realize it's easier to remove material than to add, but I'm still going to reduce the length to eight inches to allow for the waistband and in the hope of keeping the fullness a bit more pert, shall we say. Translating the measurements I took onto paper, I end up with a rectangle that's two times the length of my waist to seat measure of eight inches. And that's two times because it will be folded over. So that's 16 inches long by 10 inches wide. I drew this shape onto paper, cut it out, and then positioned it onto the wire mesh in a bias direction. In order to ensure accuracy, I made a 45 degree fold on my piece of paper and aligned the line of that fold with one of the straight wires before chalking the outline and cutting it out. And then I couldn't help myself, I just had to see what kind of compression could be delivered to the top edge of this rectangle. The first thing to do is to gather one edge onto a band. The instructions reference stay tape but I have this ribbon that I'm going to use. I have no idea how wide to make this or how far to gather it down. It is all guesswork. And I did notice that the top of the patent image showed a definite curve. So whereas I could gather it with more of a flatness at the top, I see that this curve seems to throw more fullness towards the center, which is definitely the look we're going for. The edges of the tape will have to be finished, but I will do that after the external edges have been secured. On to the next part, which is to fold this in half. The tape appears from the drawings to stay on the inside and the base folds over to meet the top contracted edge. Then. Binding tape is used down the sides only to hold everything in place. The final stage will be the waistband at the top. I'll use this bias trim that I made last year. This is matching the corners. I'm using straight pins to hold it in place as I go. Now this is the point where I've realized just how fiddly this material can be. It's very flexible, but not entirely so. While many sewing projects I've done can be forced to behave in more or less of a two-dimensional manner, this is most definitely working three-dimensionally. It's just dawned on me that the bias tape I made is simply too small. In order to ensure that the wire edges are well secured, I need to use something wider. Thankfully, I've just found this in my drawer that's the perfect size. There is quite a lot of flex along the edge here, and I'm not sure if I am to compress it or stretch it out. The patent image shows it curving outwards somewhat, but I'm not entirely sure by how much. Just like I'm not sure if I may have overly compressed the top, or perhaps if my piece wasn't even wide enough to start with. This first side looks good. There's definitely some bounce at the base, which is going to be very, very useful in the supporting of a skirt. For the second half, I'm actually going to compress it a bit more than I did on the first half, just to get a comparison between the two. Now that it's completed, Comparing what I've made to the patent image and then looking at the difference between the two sides from the base, I think I'm going to compress the first side a bit more. There's definitely more fullness on the side that's been further compressed.
Well, it's pinned in place. There's lots of bounce, but truthfully, I'm really not sure how this is going to work out under a skirt. It feels like it might collapse too much, like there's not enough structure to it. And perhaps that's why the padded versions I referenced earlier were so popular. I guess we'll see. Let's move now to the sewing machine. I'm using my 3115 Taylor's model, a machine that I bought in January of 2020 and spent a year slowly refurbishing. I finally got it up and running perfectly a year later. First step is to wind a bobbin with heavy duty thread and then thread the machine. A switch out of the bobbins and we're ready to go. I'm placing some scrap fabric under my work to try to minimize any scratching on the bed of my machine by the wire mesh. It's very slow going, not being helped I must point out by the fact that my pins should really be facing the other direction for easier removal. Now that both sides have been stitched, it's time to secure the tape onto which I had compressed the mesh. The mesh here seems to want to lose some of its topmost curvature, so it's very important to push this center down towards the base. With the tape secured now, I trim the ends of it along with the edges of the bias tape, which I will finish off by hand and then bind the top. This entire object will be attached to a waist tie, but I want to take the extra step of binding everything beforehand. Now to finish and secure the edges of the tape, I'm using a pin to fold them over underneath of the side of the edging and then securing everything by hand. If I make one of these again, I will endeavor to secure the tape ends underneath of the edging because honestly, this handwork needn't have been done. You might notice that the white waist tie has already been secured to the top. I'm not sure where the video clip to that has gone. Operator error, I suppose. But I simply ran some bias tape through my sewing machine to seal it, if you will, and then nested the bustle inside of an open section in the middle before sewing that together. With the ends finished, this bustle patented by Henry Taylor in 1897 is ready for a reveal. I really was dubious about how this would work out. The mesh seemed so flexible when I was working on it. I had anticipated far more stiffness. So I really didn't think that it would hold up well under the weight of the skirt, but it does. And I'm impressed, very surprised, but impressed. I hope you enjoyed my exploration into recreating this patent. I've already filmed the processes for the second and third bustles. I just wanted to make this one available as soon as it was ready for viewing. So I do hope you'll stick around for the other parts by subscribing to the channel and making sure you select that notification bell so that you know when it's been uploaded. Thanks for joining me and I really look forward to seeing you next time.